Hello. Hold on, let's get the mic in place. Oh, hello. Um, so no, I was going to talk about Sebastian, but I've been wanting to do this one for a while. So I thought, well, I've done Sebastian every night since this whole case started. Apart from when I've not been able to get online because I've had my grandkids here and stuff like that. Anyway, there's nothing new apart from all the arguing and people putting each other down, you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. But I will be back with Sebastian tomorrow night. I will be back. But I wanted to talk about Magdalene tonight, Magdalene Soto. Because so much has come up on this case the past week or so. So much. Well, more than a week now. Because he was a he was charged with the murder of Magdalene. What? Two, three weeks ago now. But it's just that more information has been released now. And I'm going to be showing one of Vinnie, Vinnie Paul, Politon, Politon, his, his uh, videos. And I was watching it last night and I was, I thought what I read in those documents that I got hold of was bad enough. But now there's like 1,700 images and videos, right? This, trigger warning, okay? Not for under 18 years of age. If you're under 18, you should not be here. Right. So, we will be looking at this. Anyway, how's everyone been today? Hope you've all had a nice day. I've had, I did a live earlier on my other channel. Where I've discussed four cases. And next week I'll probably do two lives. Monday and Wednesday. All depends. If my son and daughter-in-law come Monday, then I won't do it Monday. <laughs> because they normally come round about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and that's when I'd go live. Um, so, we'll see. So, what day are we on now? Are we on Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. Not long for the weekend, everyone. Not long. Right, before we start, I'm going to just get the video up. It's, up. it's on my Facebook page. I've got quite a lot on there today. I, I, I sort of like went through it all and thought, yes, that's what I want to show. Right, first of all, I want to show you the video, the audio of the police audio the day, I think it was the day before he got arrested. So it was the day after Madeline went missing. Or was it the day Madeline went missing? I'm not sure. So it's one of them days. It's either the day, I think it was the day after Madeline went missing. The next day, I did. so it would have been the 27th of February. And I was speaking to him, I believe, outside. And I was just going over his timeline. But it's interesting to listen to. Now, we've got this to by Criminal Intent X Karina. What is it? Criminal Extent X Karina, Katrina Marie. Right? So, 
Her link will be in the description below once I upload it to YouTube. <laughs> so, criminal... Criminal... Intent. So right, I'm writing it down so I don't forget. But I was looking at one of the cases I was looking at today. And it's a couple it's a couple a few years old now. Right. But this case was marked up as Amber Alert. But then they've took the amber alert off it. And I couldn't believe that. I thought, oh, John, this child is still missing. So why have you took the amber alert off? You know what I mean? So, oh, John, I just want to see if I can get a picture of Madeline up there as well. Uh, let's have a look. God, my cats are at it again. They don't give up these cats. I'm just to go on. Right, me be quiet. You just being fed? Well, about half an hour ago, you was fed. Right, I put that photo up. But, um, yeah, we're looking at Madeline Soto, who was who went missing on the same day as Sebastian Rogers, the 25th of February. But then her body was found on the 26th, the 1st of March. Well, her body was found on the 1st of March in some grassy area in between some trees. Right where someone had reported seeing Stephen Stern's car parked up. looked like he was dealing with a puncher. Right? But we all know he wasn't. We all know he wasn't. Sorry. So, she was found on March the 1st. The autopsy has not been released because it's a minor. And it's up to the uh, person who does the autopsy. And it's also up to the family if they release the autopsy, autopsy report. From what I can understand. Oh my God, this cat of mine. What's he moaning about, Toby? Don't sort him out. Come on. Give him a clout. So... Someone else is going to join us, I will. But we can just recap them. So I'm going to play this. I've got to first put it up here so that you can hear it. Share screen. Right, I'm not showing it on my screen for here. Yeah. I've got it on the back office, in my back office, so I, I can stop and start it if I need to, right? But I'm not going to show anything on here today apart from this beautiful girl, right? Or, in some cases, this. This is one hell of a trigger warning case. One hell of a trigger warning case. 
Yeah, people want are uh, saying they want the DP for the uh, assault charges, not right? the CI charges. But they can't. And people go, oh, but they brought a new law in. Yes, they brought the new law in. Right? Now, this year, they can't charge him. For, they can't go for the DP for anything he done before those before that law was brought in. If you know what I mean. So, but he will... I hope to God to go for the DP on the murder charge. But like I said, they've got plenty of time to sort those case, that case out because the first case will be the CA charges. So that's the first court case that will go through. And to be honest with you, it's a bit annoying, tell you why, because It'll go through that, and you'll probably get life in prison, right? So when the death, uh, when murder, when the trial for the murder charge comes in, he'll be thinking, well, what's the point of me going to court? I mean, I'm in prison now for the rest of my life, so what's the point? And I can guarantee you, I will be gobsmacked if he shows, shows up for the murder charge, court, court case. I can't see him doing that. Who else did that? Um, oh, yeah. Um, Adam Montgomery. Because he was already doing like something like 35 to 70 years in prison anyway for these gun charges, right? And he then confessed to two of the charges that he was chopped of those charges. He thought, well, I'm going to be in prison for the rest of my life. With this gun charge, I'm in it for like 35, 40 years. And with the two charges I've confessed to, I'm looking at another 20, 30 years. So he knew he was in there for life, so we couldn't see the point in going to court. And that's annoying because then when we do, because when they do, I'll be streaming this one, this court case. I'll also be streaming the case when uh, Audrey Cunningham, when that e piece of evil foil, whatever goes to court. And so we've got a few cases, a couple of cases to follow. But anyway, we're going to listen to this. Right. I know that you already spoke to the other detective, right, about... And this was, a, I believe it was the morning after um, Madeline was reported missing. Because apparently when they phoned law enforcement upon the night time, they hadn't got any deputies to go to their house because there's some, they're all busy somewhere else doing other, th other things. So... It was late on the night when the police went. So it was the next day they spoke to Stephen and to the mother. Everything that kind of happened today, if you can just kind of go over it with us one more time. The timeline from like when you guys woke up and took her to school and all that. So we woke up early. Um, the plan was that we were going to get McDonald's breakfast on the way. So we made amazingly good time. I don't mean to interrupt you, okay? Um, neither of us were here yesterday. So if you can be kind of like specific about like times and and stuff like that, okay? Um, woke up around 7, 7.15, somewhere around there, um, which is an early start for us. But she had, we had talked about getting McDonald's breakfast beforehand. So we want to make good time. Um, we did make good time. We got out the door maybe 7.30, 7.45-ish, maybe. Um, got over to that area. She was asleep in the car most of the time, just snoozing until we got there. Um, we got to McDonald's. We're close to McDonald's. I said, you still want it? She wasn't interested in the McDonald's anymore, so we continued on. And uh, she wanted to be dropped off 
a little down the ways from the school. Uh, she's got this phase that she's been into lately where she's very particular about what car she's seen getting out of in front of the school. Um, she prefers her mom's car, but my cars are, I guess, kind of hoopties. Um, I get it. It's an image thing. But um, that was sometime probably between 8.20 and 8.40ish. Somewhere in there, it was along the stretch of the road that um, on the right side that has all the communities on it. Mm -hmm. Before you get to the overpass, you could see the overpass from where it was. Mm -hmm. um, so it was on that side on that stretch of road, and that's where I dropped her off. She said she was going to go wait for her friends. She was going to find them and hang out and wait for her friends. And I asked if that was going to be okay. She said, "Yeah, it's fine." Um, kids get dropped off early enough as it is. It's not totally unusual for that to happen. It's just not usually that early that I drop her off. I mm -hmm. do school runs every once in a while for her. Um, I said, okay, let her out. Have a good day. Love you. Thanks. Love you too. And then I turned around and was driving away and was watching her in my rearview mirror to make sure that she was going where we were supposed to go. And she was moving in that direction, but she was rummaging around in her backpack or something. What I assumed was probably headphones or something like that, but I found out later that she forgot her phone here, so she may have been rummaging for her phone. Um, but she was still kind of making her way towards towards that direction, so it looked okay. It looked like any other day, and I just continued on. After you dropped her off, what did you do? Uh, they talked to her for a minute. I told, made sure, you know, is it, is it all right that you're going early? Because it was it was still early. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, yeah, it's fine. I'm going to hang out and wait for my friends to get there, which she does sometimes. So it didn't it didn't sound, you know, outrageous or anything. Um, that was it. I told her to have a good day. I loved her. She told me she loved me too. I turned around to leave, and I was watching her in my rearview mirror. And she looked like she was walking in the right direction. She was rummaging in her bag a little bit, like I said, um, but still sort of just shambling in the right direction while she was doing it. Um, so it looked, it looked normal. It looked okay. Okay, and then what did you do after you left the area? Uh, I left to go to the local vape shop because I needed some more vape juice. Um, they weren't quite open yet, so... I ended up going back home, waited about an hour or so, and then went back and checked the vape shop again. Uh, it was open, so I got what I needed there and uh, came back home. Do you remember what time you came home? The first time was probably right around 10, close to it. And then I waited here and went back to the vape shop, um, probably finished at the vape shop and came back home again a little after 11. And then what'd you do after that? Uh, I had a couple errands to run over on 192. She was talking about making a BJ shopping list. She just wanted to make sure I was back in time for us to both go pick up. Um, so I was visiting some card shops around the area on 192. Um, I'm kind of a nerd, so we had a new trade card game release, and I was seeing what the situation was with it. Do you remember what places you visited? Uh, yeah, Coliseum of Comics. Um, stopped by a couple of Targets, and I was going to go to House Rules Games down by Oak and 192. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't make it that far. I got a flat tire on the way. Do you remember where you got your flat tire? It was on 192. I pulled into over into one of those plazas somewhere. Um, it's been about 10 years since I switched out a tire, though, so I made a lot of rookie mistakes and ended up pinning my thumb between the frame and the, oh, the no. jack. Yeah, I'm lucky it's not a lot worse than it could have been. Do you remember the name of the plaza by any chance? Do you remember like what stores were? It, it was it was like right before you got to Oak though, so it was one of those little strips. Okay. I don't know. You've probably been asked already, but she's never ran away or been away for longer than a certain period of time. Uh, amount of time. I'll tell you that. Well, she's very dependent on us. I don't think she'd know what to do if she did run away. She's not the type. She's a good kid. 
besides the ADHD issue diagnosed or anything else? Uh, yeah, um, she was tested a while back and had some symptoms of autism, so she's potentially on the spectrum there. Okay. She was officially diagnosed with it when she was younger, and then she was retested and said, well, she shows symptoms of being on the spectrum, but maybe not full-on autistic. When did you come back to help um, her? Yeah. Um, what do you mean? Like, because you lived down south, right? Mm -hmm. When did you come back up north to help her? Um, I just got here this weekend. Do you remember what day it was? Uh, Sunday. Sunday was her birthday party, so yeah, it was it was the evening after her birthday party, Sunday. Okay. Do you remember what time you got here on Sunday? Um, eight eight thirty ish, maybe. Okay. Just in time to make sure that she was doing all her nighttime routines. I'm waiting for her mom to get home. Yeah. Did you guys go anywhere last night? Is that media? Maybe. I think Fox 35 or something. Yeah. Let me tell him to move to the Okay. Um, I don't recall. You have to ask her if we went anywhere. I don't recall. I was so zonked out on Adivan at that point. Okay. This I was a wreck. Yeah. I don't and this would have been when? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I don't recall us going anywhere last night, but I, honestly, at that point, my brain was mush, and I was on so many tranquilizers to keep me stable. I was just... You said Ativan? Yeah. You make a U-turn, you go back to the McDonald's, but you said that she still doesn't want the McDonald's. Still doesn't want it. She was just going to eat the danishes that I had given her. So you're going up here now, still northbound on Jongyang Parkway. Mm -hmm. You make a left at the town center yeah. this time town center and then make, make the right, right on to yes mm -hmm. and then you drop her off around like dropped her off around halfway up the road there okay. um, so keep in mind all of this is still northbound okay right you're still northbound on Jung Young parkway northbound. so Please. why is your car seen going southbound at 810 at i'll show you what location it is McDonald's is over here. Mm -hmm. At 810, your car is seen going southbound at this intersection. So meaning going toward Kissimmee. Mm -hmm. I had forgotten some I had forgotten my gate clicker. I'm sorry. I forgot I had gone back to the house real quick after we left. Because um, I forgot my gate clicker. Um, I actually had to go through the front gate and use my parking pass uh, to grab my clicker. So it was the wrong time. I'm, I'm sorry. I, like I said, I was guesstimating these times. I'm not a morning person. I don't think I have any other questions. Uh, do you? Lose? I don't know where my head was yesterday. It was so far up my backside. That's okay. We understand. Um, in the meantime, while we're waiting for all this to get sorted out, I am going to hold on to your phone, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I'll get it back to you when we're done. Okay. okay? Do you have any questions for us? Um, how long are you going to need my phone? That's I'm not sure. I'm waiting for my supervisor yeah. to call me. My dad. No, it's just my dad's using that to get a hold of me and get updates. Yeah, they can call Jen's phone. Okay. Did the other detective give you his business card? Um, I believe so. Okay, well, here's mine in case you want it for any reason. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do you swear that everything you told us is true? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. I know it's a little hectic right now. I know that you already spoke. Right. Yeah. They literally caught him out. Why would Mike we was in a bit of a rush, he said. Because we we wanted to get to McDonald's to have breakfast. Right? And we're in a bit of a rush. We managed to get out good in good time, probably like 7.30, 7.45. Well, we know at 7.30, he's on video putting some stuff, items, in one of those big bins. Right? And... So, where did he go? From 7.30... With Magdalene in that car, 
right? Up until 10 past 8 when they seen him heading back towards Kissimmee, where they lived. Where had he been for like 40 minutes? He said, I was taking her to school, he's going to go to McDonald's. She said no, so we carried on, but then I turned round, went back towards McDonald's. Because I was still hungry, but she didn't want nothing. So we turned round again. I took this turning and this turning. And then I dropped her off just down the road from the school. Sort of thing. Well, I'm sorry, but... I don't even believe he went that route at all. I think he went... I don't know where he'd been. Perhaps he'd been scouting out areas to put her. Because then when he was seen coming back to get the key thing, they got him on video coming back in the ha in the gates. Right? With her sitting slumped with her head towards him. To her left side. Right? They believed she was dead then. Right? They believe she was dead come 7.30 because they threw her computer and her school bag in the dumpster. You wouldn't do that if a child was still alive. Right? Now, this is my problem with the mother. He went back to the apartments. Did she know her daughter was in that car unalived because she said she saw her daughter getting ready for school at 8 a.m. Can't be because at 10 past 8 they've got him heading towards back towards the apartments. You know what I mean? So there's no way she, Madeline could have been in two places. And there's no way he could have left her house at 8 o'clock got all the way up by where he was and then headed back southwards towards Kissimmee within 10 minutes. He couldn't have done it. Right? So, why did she lie about that? And now, the next video we're going to watch is Vinnie Beholton. Right, and is it Vinny Paulton? No, I'll go. Watch this one. I don't know if this is the one I want to watch. Right, all right, he, I'll read what it says in this. Right, share this tab. Uh, uh, I'll take this down. Take this photo down. Right. But I am going to put this up. Please, this is trigger warning. If you were anywhere, any young children by you, put headphones on. Put earpieces in. Or watch it later when there's no children around. Right, I'm going to put this sign up in the corner, right, because children should not be listening or hearing this. Right, it goes, Madeline Soto case, New Stephen Stern's documents, detail, Google Drive, sleeping arrangements and security footage. Right, we're going to, first of all, I'm going to just play this little video here. It's only three minutes, 26, it's a news, news thing. 
and how he took Maddie to McDonald's and then dropped her off at school. But police believe he had already killed the 13 year old. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Luann Sorrell. And I'm John Brown. During this interview, detectives say they noticed that his statements weren't adding up. Fox 35's Randy Hildreth is live this afternoon. So, Randy, at one point in the interview, he spoke about Maddie in the past tense. Yeah, good evening to you both. So we got this new audio and these new court documents. In that interview, law enforcement are really trying to nail down a timeline with Stearns of what happened that morning, where they allegedly went, and what he did for the rest of the day. And as you mentioned, as you listen to the audio, investigators early on have some questions. Warren Kasumi speaking with Stefan Stearns. New audio released appears to show very early on investigators questioned Stefan Stearns' story about the day 13-year-old Maddie Soto disappeared. Stearns told detectives he and Maddie left the house early to stop by McDonald's before school on the morning of February 26th. But when asked about the route he took to McDonald's and then school, the sh Oh, God, no. Tell me. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't know the street names. And when pressed further for times and locations that morning. Why is your car seen going southbound at, at 810 at, I'll show you what location it is. McDonald's is over here. Mm -hmm. At 810, your car is seen going southbound at this intersection. So meaning going toward Kissimmee. I had forgotten some. I had forgotten my gate clicker. I'm sorry. I forgot. I had gone back to the house real quick after we left. During the interview, investigators also questioned Stearns about his phone. You can hear him admit to doing a factory reset. I noticed that you don't have anything before this morning. Is that unusual on your phone? Uh, no, it's it's a new phone. I'm stupid. I went to do an update yesterday morning. Um, um, I don't know what the heck I did, but somehow during the massive OS update, I managed to factory reset my phone. And when asked about his relationship with Maddie, he appears to refer to her briefly in the past tense. I love her like she's my own. Before talking about her in present tense. She does like video games, yeah. Um, she plays Roblox, Minecraft. Stearns was arrested February 28th, a day after this interview and two days after Maddie was reported missing, initially on sex crime charges because of images allegedly found on his phone that day. Now, since, since those sex crime charges, Stearns has been charged with Maddie's murder. Now, these New York court documents don't detail how Maddie was killed, but investigators say early on they believe she was killed before the school day started now these weren't the only new documents that were released today coming up new for you at six we have some new graphic documents and details to share about his sex crimes case reporting live tonight in right right it says here osceola county whatever Fox 35 has obtained new documents from the Florida State Attorney's Office in the Madeline Soto investigation, which provides new details previously unknown, including the initial interview police had with Stephen Stearns. Soto's mum's boyfriend and his timeline of what happened the day the girl was reported missing the 1,700 sexually explicit images allegedly found on his cell phone and details about his relationship with the 13-year-old girl. 1,700 on his phone. The documents, mainly investigative reports, summarise summaries and a recorded interview between Stearns and a detective. Provide graphic, potentially disturbing details that led to the 60 child sex related charges Stearns was initially arrested on. Two days after Madeline Soto was reported missing. Hang on, just gotta check something. Right. Was reported missing. 
It also provides details on Stern's timeline of what happened in the hours before and after Magdalene Soto was reportedly dropped off at school. Officials and law enforcement said Soto never made it to class that day. The State Attorney's Office has publicly commented on the release of these documents. Fox 35 has reached out. Fox 35 previously reported on a list of evidence that the State Attorney's Office had in its possession related to its investigation and the case into Soto's disappearance and Stern's alleged involvement. That list included statements, logs, incident reports from law enforcement, social media accounts, possibly tied to Madeline, car and cell phone tracking information and a medical examiner's office report. He's going down. Details on how Madeline Soto died or the circumstances surrounding her death have not been released. The medical examiner's office has declined to release an uh, autopsy report citing the investigation and state law. Right, fair enough. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't want to read it. I really wouldn't. Among the, we'll hear about when it goes to court, put it that way. Among the documents is a police interview with Stearns, which was recorded on February the 27th, the day before he was described as, prime, as a prime suspect in his disappearance. He had, not, he had also not been charged with her disappearance, death, or due to the alleged, alleged images on his cell phone, which he voluntarily provided to law enforcement. Because he thought by doing a factory reset, he would clear it all. Uh, duh, no. They can pull all that information back. Stearns was indicted by a grand jury in charge with first-degree murder on April the 25th, nearly two months after Madeline's body was found in a grassy area in Osceola County. Here's what we learned from the new documents. As detectives were searching for Madeline Soto, officials arrested Stearns, alleging that he had child... SI material on his cell phone. He had voluntarily provided his cell phone to law enforcement to presumably aid in those search efforts, though he told them that he had inadvertently performed a factory reset on his phone prior to giving it to law enforcement. Now, I'm sure when you do a factory reset, it will ask you, are you sure you want to continue? And you have to press yes or no. So there's no accident about it. No accident about that. Anyone doing a factory reset on the phone, unless someone like me, then yeah, I can do a factory reset. I've got nothing to hide, but if my phone's playing up, I could do a factory reset. I won't know, because you knowing my luck, my phone would probably go, F you. I'm not going to restart again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shortly after, Stearns was booked into jail and charged with 60 counts of sexual battery. Sexual battery. Lewd and las lascivious molestation and unlawful possession of materials depe depicting S performance of a child. I don't know what the heck I did, but somehow, during the massive OS update, I managed to factory reset my phone and lose all my contacts, all my information, Stearns told police officers, according to a 43-minute recording obtained by Fox 35 in that public records request. Well, we only heard 10 minutes of it, so a lot of it was cut out. Right? We only heard 10 minutes of that. I'm sure I heard a longer version. I'm sure I've heard a longer version. Right? 
Nej. Nej, för att jag Men jag Fox 35 previously reported that the images allegedly found on Stone's phone were graphic and sexual, and the subject appeared to be a child, according to the probable cause statement connected to those charges. The documents alleged... Hold on, I just want to change them on here. Oh no, I'm leaving it up so you can read it. That's it. Oh. The documents alleged. Well, I'm going to remember. According to the proper cause statement, the documents alleged that the photos dated back to June 2019. Now, from what I heard in one of these videos, which I'm going to be playing, I think it's in the one I'm playing tonight. She was about, what, eight years old. Because this had been going on for like seven years. And he was lying on the bed with her. Watching some Disney film or something. And he asked her to put his P in her M, otherwise she couldn't have her phone. Right? You'll hear all this in the other video. In the newly released documents, law enforcement allegedly found some 1,700 images within a folder within a Google Drive account. Several of those images were explicit and some appeared to be of Soto, according to the document, and taken over at least two years ago. Well, we know she was younger than 10 when it started, we know that. The documents also led to was ongoing sexual essay between Stearns and Madeline. In the interview with police, Jones confirmed he had saved photos to Google Drive account and that there was photos of him and Madeline, the report said. When I asked Stefan about all the pictures he had saved, Stefan then asked if he should be talking to a lawyer. Shortly after that, Stefan requested a lawyer and the detective wrote in the report. The documents also provide details of some of the sleeping arrangements contained within their home. Now this, she, this is where I find the mother is a piece of, she's a mother fecker, letting her child, oh my God. Jean Soto, Jane Soto, Maggie's m mother told detectives that she and Stearns had dated on and off. Now, this was an, a serious relationship. This was a relationship that was on and off, on and off, on and off, for at least seven years, and that he lived at the home on and off. Right? When he was at the home, however, it was not unusual for the three of them to sleep in the same bed or for him to sleep in the same bed as Magdalene while Jane slept somewhere else or was, at, not, or was not at home, according to the documents. These details were contained in a law enforcement summary report following a conversation with Jane Soto amid the search for her daughter. Now, she told law enforcement this herself, right? as well as law enforcement's conversations with Stearns. Stern told law enforcement that Madeline always needed human contact when going to sleep, something that Stearns referred to as snuggling, the report said. Hmm, yeah, we know you're snuggling. In the same conversation between law enforcement and Jen Soto, Madeline Soto's mum, report, the report implies that detectives let her know about the suspicions of the alleged essay. The report states that Redacted did not want to believe Redacted and Stephen were engaged in SA. Redacted. 
asked to see the image of Steph, Stephen and redacted. We know who the, who the redacted is, right? When shown a printed photo of what was allegedly found on the Google Drive, Madeline Soto's mom claimed she did not recognise anything in the picture as if she was in denial and then later became visibly upset, the document states. To be clear, Chen has not been named or an official person of interest or suspect connected to her daughter's disappearance or death, nor has she been charged with anything related to this case. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Who did the uh, laundry in that house? Right? Um, ha, did she, like, she goes, uh, she was diagnosed with uh, ADHD. I don't think she had ADHD. I think she was suffering from traumatic experiences of having to do what she was having to be made to do with Stephen. Yes, she had anxiety probably. Yes, I'd have anxiety if I was a child. I'd have anxiety as a woman. I'm just being a partner to him. However, officials previously said everyone who was close to Madeline was considered a suspect until ruled out. It's also unclear how much or how little Jane and her family are cooperating with the investigation. Investigators couldn't answer those questions at a news conference last month, citing the ongoing case. In a third forming interview with law enforcement on the day, Madeline Sertor was reported missing. Police talked to Stephen Stearns about where he's doing the morning, what, where he was during the morning hours, the route he took to take Soto's to school, and where he went immediately after. In the interview, Stearns appeared to have difficulty placing the exact roads and route he took on the way to Hunters Creek Middle School. At what time, times, and blame? Apparent inconsistencies in that timeline on not being a morning person and for taking apparent prescribed medication for anxiety when questioned by detectives, according to the report. Well, I must admit, right, I know how to get to places, right? But ask me the names of the roads, and it's like, uh, no, don't know. I don't know. All I know is you go down this, take a left down this road, then you take a right, then you take a left. You know what I mean? Don't ask me the names of roads, I wouldn't know. Never had been. When I was younger and someone pulled up once in a car asking for directions somewhere, I said, is there any landmarks by there? Like, is there a church? Is there an office building? Is there a shopping centre? Anything. And they go, oh, well, there is this church and it's a little church and it's by the park. And I'd know where they're talking about then. I know exactly where to go, or like I say, it's by a police station, exactly know where to go. I could direct them. But don't ask me the names of the roads. Here are a few of Stern's recounts to police as he heard in the interview. Stern said he and Madeline discussed getting breakfast at McDonald's before school, but I never got it. Stern said he was unfamiliar with the road names on his route to Magdalene School. But to be honest, I just said I would be, I'm, you know what I mean? I know the name of my, the road my son lives on. And I'm not sure of the name of the road you turn up to get to his route. I can't remember. I really can't. I know the road off that road, but you know what I mean? There's other roads I don't know the names of. Stern forgot to mention to police that he drove. Oh, Stern said he and Madeline both forgot their phones at home that day. Stern forgot to mention to police that he drove all the way back to Kissimmee to retrieve the gate clicker for his neighbourhood before dropping Madeline off at school. 
that's when I got him on camera with her sitting slumped in the car. Stearns visited a smoke shop after dropping Madeline off at school twice. Once because it wasn't open and then again later on. Stearns forgot to mention to police that he'd gotten, he had, he'd gotten a flat tyre after dropping Madeline off at school. In an interview with police, Stern said he and Jen stayed local while the rest of her family went out to physically look for the 13-year-old girl. An officer asked Stern if he and Jen had driven together or separately and he said he didn't think they had driven anywhere. Well, surely you'd know whether you'd driven somewhere or not. There would be no, we didn't drive anywhere. We was looking on the, on the, where, around where we lived. We was walking around that way. Every, other members of the family went further out. He said he was zonked, zonked out on anxiety medication and was unable to recall where he was. My brain was mush. Yeah, I can I can understand that. I'm like that in the morning, to be honest. Be honest, I am. I'm not a morning person. My brain, it's like if someone starts asking me questions in the morning, it's like, are you for real? No, don't ask me questions in the morning. Just give me coffee. Just give me coffee. Don't talk to me. Don't ask me questions. Because my brain is not in gear. It's not. I have to sit and have a cup of coffee for a good hour before my brain gets into some sort of, okay, the day started, we've got to get up and we've got to get dressed, we've got to get washed, we've got to get dressed, we've got to do this. You know what I mean? And I was on so many tranquilizers to keep me stabilised. Hmm, hmm. He said, according to the interview. Hold on. This interview was the day after Madeline went missing. So from the moment that she wasn't at school, he apparently had so much anxiety medication, so many tranquilizers to keep him stabilised. I think that would have, he'd have been overdosed, if that was the case. He gave overdosed. Right. Amid the search for Madeline Soto, detective obtained surveillance video from the entrance to the gated community where Stearns, Jen and Maggie lived, according to the report. The surveillance video, according to the report, showed Stearns' vehicle leave the complex with a female wearing a green sweater in the front seat. The female was slumped over to her left, which, which is an abnormal way for a person to be seated in a vehicle. Oh, it's when she was leaving. Okay. This specific report does not detail what time the surveillance footage was captured and does not identify the person in the green sweater as Maggie. Again, details on the circumstances of how Maggie Soto died, how she's found, and what she's wearing have not been confirmed or released by law enforcement. Law enforcement previously state, said, amid the search for Madeline Soto, that they had obtained surveillance video that showed Soto in a vehicle and that they believe she was dead at the time and that the surveillance video that dead at the time that surveillance video was captured. Jane and Stearns told detectives that Soto had been dropped off at school on the morning of February 26th. Law enforcement determined that Soto was not in school that day. Oh, look at this. Suspect Stephen Stearns complains about jail, sleeping on concrete jewelry. That was the, the ride he was taking from one jail to another. <laughs> what a shame. Later, Later, investigators found Madeline's backpack and school issued laptop in the dumpster of an apartment complex in Kissimmee. It remains unclear at this time if her belongings were found at the same apartment complex. I think it is. It's also unclear when exactly Madeline was killed, but detectives believe it was between February 25th. Now, it says here February 25th and February 27th. 
Well, we know that's wrong. Because I've got her on video slumped in the car on February the 26th. You know what I mean? So that's just wrong, that date. They typed in the wrong number. Pre-trial hearing for Stern marriage case is scheduled for July the 10th. Oh, I'll have to remember that. July the 10th, pre-trial hearing. I need a, I'm going to need war calendars so that I can mark up all these jewellery dates. Pre-trial. Hearing. He probably won't show. He hasn't shown me any of the other hearings. Right? He won't show. Regarding the SB case, the sexual battery case, Stern's pre-trial hearing is scheduled for July the 10th, with trial set for August the 19th. That isn't going to happen. That won't, be, that won't happen in August the 19th. These dates are subject to change. Oh, yes, they are. Then I'm going to do that by August the 19th. Get all that ready for trial. No. Right. So, uh, let's face it now. So, it was, that's what I wanted to read to you. Mm-hmm. Just be down here. Where is it? Oh, here it is. It's coming to me. Yeah. He's done two videos. This is one of them. And what I'm going to do, I will speed it up. Just a little bit. Okay. Come on. Madeline. Having a man like that in and out of her life. It's very confusing. Very confusing for a child. That fact alone, somewhat irresponsible, I would argue. Like if there's a reason for him to not be in your life, that instinct was probably correct. You, you cut it off. It's done. You can't have him in and out, in and out, in and out. On and off for seven years. That creates uh, less stability in a home with a young girl who needs a little stability. But my guess is there was something about his character, something about what he did, how he treated her, what he said, that turned it into this on again, off again. And then he would say whatever he needed to say to get on again so he could pray again upon Madeline. Okay. Stefan had moved out of the home in the latter part of 2023, November and December. Okay. So he had moved out. So he was living in the house, then not living in the house. Living in the house, not living in the house. You can't do that. You can't do that. You cannot do that. All right, if he's in your life, there's a reason. He moves in, okay. But then there's a reason for him to be gone. And then he comes back, and then he's gone, and then he comes back. What is that? What is that? You don't do that. If you're single, you do it. If you're single, but you have a child that you need to take care of, a child that needs some stability in her very challenging life. You just don't do that. Okay. So December, November, December, 2023, he's out. Jen Soto stated while they were together, they would either, here we go, all sleep in the same bed, or Madeline would sleep with her when Stefan was not there. When asked if it was normal that Stefan and Madeline to sleep together without her being there, and she said, yes. Can you believe that? One file. Again, we're still in the... Mother. Who on earth would let your child, be it girl or boy, 
sleep in the same bed as you and your partner. Right? And who in this heavenly world would send your partner and your daughter to sleep in another room because you want some sleep because your anxiety is playing up. Is it because you know what he wants to do, Jen? Is that why your anxiety is playing up? Is she saying, Mom, tell him to stop? Mom, tell him. So your anxiety is playing up. Is she saying that, Jen? Is she? And you've just turned around and said, why don't you just go in another room? Just go in another room. Or, even better, I'll go in another room. You two stay here, I'll go in another room. I need some sleep, my anxiety is playing up. Who on earth would do that? This one sick mother fecker. I'm a, you can't call her a mother. Sorry for my little rant. Parent mode right now. I'll put on my prosecutor's hat in a second. Why? Someone who's in and out of your life, you're putting your daughter in bed with him alone? What? What? How is that even possible? How is that even... I can't, M -can't. How is that even a choice? How is that even like a possibility in all of this? That the arrangement was, well, if we're all here, then we all sleep together. But if I'm not here, then they sleep together with mom's blessings on a guy that she wasn't even sure if she wanted to be with. What is that thought process as a parent? Where did that come from? Exactly. If you're not there, I'm sorry, but if if I had a daughter and I had a partner, right? She's got to have known something was going on. She had to. Hope you're okay tonight, guys. Hope you're not driving tonight. Right. Well, I'll tell you something now. I'll do it now with my grandkids. Right. I used to do it with my kids and they did it with me and my dad. Even when we was downstairs, when they went to bed, if they come downstairs for some water or juice or whatever, they'd knock on the living room door first or they'd knock our bedroom door before coming in. Right. Yeah, okay, when there's babies, they used to climb in the bed with us, right? But as they got older, it was like, you're not getting in our beds, you can go in your own bed, come on. You know what I mean? So, but there's no way I would, I'd, I'd send my child, if I had to work nights, Right? I would send my child to the grandmother's that night. Right? I'd ask my mother if she could pick her up from school. Or could you make your way to your grandmother's work, where she worked? Because apparently she didn't live, f she didn't, her school wasn't far from the mother's office. So she could have made her way there. Right? Because that's what she thought had happened on the night, on the Monday night, that perhaps she'd made her way to the mo her grandmother's office. Right, so, but there's no way on this earth would I have another, a child of mine in a bed with me and my partner. No, not happening. Not how would have to freeze over? And even then it wouldn't happen. She's just one sick mother. She had to know.
right? And do you think maybe since she does have a father out of state, right? Married to someone else. But she had a, maybe that's a conversation you have with the, with the girl's father. Hey, I was thinking um, I have this on again, off again boyfriend who sleeps over. And I think, uh, you think it's okay if, if I let Jen sleep with him? I'm just big to get up a bit. Like if he knew within five minutes, it would be over. Yeah. She fed him. She fed her to him. Yes. Here. Here. Have her. She did feed. She gave her own daughter to him. This makes no sense. She's sick. And I don't want to hear from Jen Soto that it's tough being a single mother by yourself. I don't want to hear that. No, I don't. Um, she has sister, mother in town, right? Like they're in town. They were at the birthday party. So they're there. Now I'm reading some of these comments and someone's saying that they may have known about this. I mean, if they knew, what kind of family is this? I can't imagine. I can't imagine anyone would think this would be all right. In any world. Like, that's, I mean, you, you've got help if you need it. I'm sure grandma would step in there. Or, or Madeline's aunt. This, this is beyond. I mean, we were we thought there was a level of being oblivious. This is different than being oblivious as a parent. This is different than turning the other cheek. This is like, this is insanity. Absolutely, a man. And you know, and I'm not saying it would be okay, but like your relationship with this man wasn't even. Um, healthy. You're throwing your daughter in bed with him? She did, it wasn't even that she, she did more than allow it. Like she encouraged it. She's encouraging this. This is worse than I think. I thought it was going to be, she was just oblivious to it. Like, she didn't know this was happening. You know, sometimes I was at work and he'd be watching her. And, you know, I didn't know. Again, I'm going to look at this two ways. Right now I'm looking at this as a parent. Then I'm going to put on my prosecutor's hat. Maybe I'll literally put a hat on. So you know the difference. Um, what on earth? What on earth? Is going on tonight. Michelle Andrews is getting sick. I think we're all going to be sick soon. So like I was saying last time I spoke about this case, I was going to say we're going to be learning more because the discovery was exchanged and it's going to be public. There are things that are redacted here, names, but it's easy to figure out whose name they're talking about. Excuse me while I drink so, so much water, but I was um, I had a very active day outdoors today. Uh, baseball game. Um, let me get back to it. Now it gets worse. Okay. It gets worse. Oh yeah. It gets worse. So if, if, if Jen isn't home, cause we know that she works some weird hours, right? I guess they would, Stefan and, and Madeline would be in bed together. Jen Soto stated if she needed a good night's sleep due to her anxiety, she would ask them to sleep in a different bedroom. Yeah. Now she's home while, while it's happening. And she's telling, hey, why don't you two go get a room? This is sick. This is what? Like I said, it's like they're all in that bed, right? There's Stefan, there's Maggie, and uh, there's a the mom. Right? Did she know what, what was going on? She must have. What, as I said earlier, just was, was your daughter saying, mom, tell him to stop? Mom, tell him. Mom, I don't like this. Tell him to stop. But no, the mom said, well, why don't you two just go in another room? Just go to one of the other rooms. I need to get some sleep. You know what I mean? My anxiety is playing up. My anxiety will be playing up. But there's no way I'll have my child in the bed with him. No way on this. No, not happening. 
What parent? This is not a parent anymore. This is not a parenting. Yeah. What is this? How does that thought come to your mind? Oh, I'm feeling a little anxiety tonight. Why don't you two go get a, go, go in the other bedroom? What? Did she tell people this? Is it possible that she was telling anyone else in the world? Because if she told anyone else in the world, what would they say? Like That's anyone cool. else. Oh, okay. Like her doctor. Like, oh, yeah, Madeline has trouble sleeping, so I let my boyfriend sleep with her. Then all of a sudden, the doctor probably asked Madeline some questions. Did she tell anybody? Like, where? Like, I know you don't have to get a license to be a parent. I think you should. But this is this is common sense. Little Irish girl tonight. Where is she? Why is she still free? You got to wait for me to put on my prosecutor's hat for that. I'll put on my prosecutor's hat in just a little bit. I'm just going through. Like you would in 2024, we have to tell moms, hey, if your boyfriend comes over, the three of you shouldn't sleep together. Um. But if you do have to sleep together, maybe your boyfriend sleeps in another room and you two sleep by yourselves, not the other way around. I am having a hard time understanding this, where this is coming from. Like, how does how is that an option? How does that become an option? And you wonder why. Actually, we don't wonder why. We know why. She said, when I'm 13, I'm going to go live in the woods. Because if you live in the woods, you don't have to sleep with mom's boyfriend. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not. This does not compute. It doesn't compute on any level. On any level of common sense parenting. I wonder if she's told any of her friends at school. Alexandria. Alexandra W. Serious conversation. Doesn't Jen Soto seem like low IQ in her interviews? Did she know any better? She seemed uneducated, not all there. Not defending her, just saying, no. That's true. That's true. I agree with you. She didn't seem bright. But she's bright enough to have a job, okay? And it's not, and, and, and she's not doing some job that doesn't, it requires you to like speak with people. It was like travel related for Disney. So you, you had to, I don't think the IQ was so low. Maybe the self-esteem was so low. But I don't think the IQ is so low that you wouldn't understand this. I mean, you know where the baby came from when you had her, I think. <laughs> but I think it's an important question. State of mind, level of mind, low IQ versus low self-esteem. I mean, your IQ, how high would your IQ have to be? Like, I think it's the self-esteem being easily manipulated by Stearns. Like, he, like there's a reason he's with Jen Soto, right? And it's, and it's Madeline, but it's a combination of Madeline and Jen's um, personality, Jen's level of being with it, if you know what I mean. And I think that's what Alexandra is talking about here, right? So, like, that's why she's being preyed upon, Jen Soto. But... It's, it's, it's not so low that she's not working. And if it was that low, why wouldn't she be living with her, her mom or her sister? Why wouldn't they be there to help raise a child here? This isn't like, this isn't a, a little, you know, a pet. This is a child. Like to raise a child, it takes, you know, it takes something. A lot of decisions you have to make, choices you have to make. So is this about IQ or self-esteem or maybe a combination of the two? Great point, Alexandra. Thank you. Raha, Raha right, River? Raja, Raja River? Ra I was thinking about this today, about what, how, how did she get custody of Madeline? Right? But then I realized her family, her mother has got money. Right, so the father going up for custody with a mother with money is not going to win. He's not going to win. Right, I'm just going to just a little bit further up. Purposes. Okay. Apparently, his has some unique markings, which I'm not going to get into. But there are some unique markings. Like the movie Porky's. 
<clears throat> Jen Soto did not want to believe. Oh, yeah, Madeline... I'm going to go back just a sec. So, 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 all right. So at first we're learning about the dynamics of the household. The second part of this interview, again, looking at this as a parent, not a prosecutor yet. Let me put on the prosecutor hat. I had it right over there. I'll go grab it. I'll show you. I'll but as a parent, just as this goes along. your reaction to learning some more of the information here, your reaction in the interview, again, is something we need to talk about. Katie Company, I wouldn't even let my husband, now of 16 years, meet my then three-year-old for the first 13 months that we dated. Jen makes me sick. Katie gets it. Katie gets it. And she found a keeper, which is good. You found a keeper. Yeah. Jen makes, Jen's going to make everyone sick. Now, as bad as this is, what, what I'm troubled by as well is the reaction. I have more water in here too. I need a lot of water. Now, I may have to say some things without saying them. So you got to, like I'm redacting my own language here, so be ready. I'll tell you what he does. Okay. Orange County detectives had previously shown Jen Soto photographs of Stefan's. And he's got a pencil. For identification purposes. Okay. Apparently his has some pencil. unique markings, which I'm not going to get into. But there are some unique markings. Like the movie Porky's. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Jen Soto did not want to believe that Madeline and Stefan were engaged in sexual, and now it says sexual activity. I need to correct that. A child with an adult does not engage in sexual activity. No. A child with an adult is sexually abused. Yeah. Okay. But here they're talking about, instead of saying SA, meaning activity, it's, it's, it's abuse. Uh, Jen asked to see the, the image of Stefan and Madeline. I said, she's not believing it. No way. So she's bright enough to know what they're talking about here. So the IQ is not so low. What do you mean? No, she knew what they were saying here. So the investigator pulls out a printed picture from Stefan's Google Drive that showed Madeline with Stefan's pencil in Madeline's mouth. At that point, Jen says, she didn't recognize anything in the picture as if she was in denial. So the reaction to like investigators saying, listen, we found all this stuff. No, I don't believe you. Show me a picture. And then they show her a picture. I don't recognize any of that. That's your reaction. That's your reaction. At the moment, remember at this moment, all this, all this is taking place. Her daughter's missing. Her daughter's missing. Like, explain that to me. Explain that to me. How your reaction isn't anger, disgust. It's denial. Now they say, however, she became visibly upset. I asked some additional questions unrelated to this particular case. I excused myself and told her I was going to speak with Stefan. The reaction is horrific as well. You've just found out that your on again, off again boyfriend of seven years has been engaging this, in this conduct with your daughter. And they showed you the photo. So it's not like I don't believe you. I don't want to believe what's in the photo. It's right there. The evidence is there. They're not lying to her. We found out in, this, in these papers there's 1,700 files. 1,700. Going back to age eight. On video. Oh, I don't recognize anything. I wonder if she said anything else after that. I'm not seeing it in the reports that, we, that have been made public yet. Now, remember, this it appears this is the discovery for case number one. This does not appear to be um, the discovery for case number two. Now, what we've received, what's been released is, you know, a few pages. There were a thousand pages that were given over in discovery, so there's a lot more information. But is there, I mean, this 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 tells me a lot about the dynamics and her reaction when they show incontrovertible evidence. PJ, how is this lady free? I'm gonna wait till I put on my prosecutor's hat. But a great question, PJ. Oh, I see Duty Ron is here tonight. 
Make sure you're watching Duty Ron too, folks. Let's see. Wow. There are a lot of comments. <laughs> They're flying by very quickly. Was mom also essaying Madeline? All three sleeping in the same bed. Why feel anxious? Because you're on again off again, boyfriend and you are essaying your daughter. I mean, is it beyond the realm to wonder? Yep. It's not. It does make you wonder. Now, she volunteered all that information. So does that get back to what Alexandra said about the low IQ, like thinking there's nothing wrong with that? I go, oh, yeah. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just telling you the way we do this and this, the dynamics in this house. I guess she, she thought it wasn't a problem. How is that? How is that not a problem? How is that possible? I, I don't understand how it's even possible that this is going on. And and he's not sneaking it. That's this. He's not sneaking it. It's like in plain sight, in plain view. It, it's almost like she, as a mother, is more like um, Ghislaine Maxwell. It's like Mother Ghislaine. That's what she's acting like. Hmm. And now this question, this statement is from Nicole LeBlanc. Le, LeBlanc. Thank you, Nicole LeBlanc. Green eggs and ham. This just continues to get worse. I know they did an interview with the father, but I feel like she had no one. Did they recover everything he tried to throw away on surveillance? Great coverage, Vinny. Justice for Madeline. I mean, they have 1,700 files from his phone. From his Google Drive, 1,700 files that he saved, that he was saving. Why would you save this stuff? Because he's I think we know why. Was he sharing the stuff? He's selling it to in the black market thing. So here's a, I th and I think this is a part of a conversation. Way. I think Freddie Mars might be happening. Was she acting surprised or acting like, no, this isn't ha happening because she knew that Stefan had deleted all the images? My guess is she must have known. Like, where where is she on, on the uh, IQ and esteem spectrum? It would tell me a lot more. Man, I'm drinking a lot of water tonight. I may have to run upstairs and get more. This, this is bad, folks. This is really bad. Like, as a, as a parent, like, everything changes in your life when you become a parent, right? Every decision you make, every choice. I'm just fast forwarding a little bit of it because it is like two hours. Oh, he's got his hat on now, so now he's it going was. from a prostitute. So when you um, solved your first homicide, you, you would get one of these from the other um, detectives. Pretty cool. All right, so I've got my prosecutor hat on now. I would like to wear this to court sometime. That would be funny. Sorry. Sandra Cruz, Jen should get a part in a movie. She's a great actress, acting as if she did not know anything. Mothers like her should go to beep. Yeah, she's losing credibility as a parent. So let's look at this from a, a prosecutorial perspective. Let's start with the case involving the photos. Okay. So what did she do? Did she take the photos? I don't know. She didn't take the photos. I think they were selfies. Now, if there's any evidence that... Well, from what I understand... Some of those photos that was taken were taken at such would be it'd be such a weird angle to be holding your phone or taking a photo at of you know what I mean. So was they all taken by him or was there a third person in the room? You know what I mean? Looks like a third person is taking the photos. And these are pictures we won't see. Some of them are described here. I can read those descriptions for you. Well, I can't read the whole description for you, but I can give you the idea of what it is. I'll just like, tell you what it does. <clears throat> video file depicting a prepubescent female resembling Maddie, who would have been eight years and four months old. Eight years and four months old. Nine, ten. Yeah. Eight years. Maddie is laying next to Stefan in the bed watching cartoons on the television. Stefan is asking Maddie to put his pencil 
Maddie. In Maddie. For three seconds as he counts. Stefan states Maddie would not be able to play with a phone unless she did it. Now we see how these people operate. Like it's, it's, it's on video. It's on video. And he kept them. What did he do with them? Is he selling them? Yes, he's selling them. On one of these creepy um, platforms where you can't track people down. Potentially. So, okay. Do you remember that guy they arrested? Oh, what, about two months ago? They used to, all the kids in the area used to know him as Father, call him Father Christmas or Santa. His son, him and his son, the police raided the house, the son killed himself. Right? It wouldn't surprise me. It's just my opinion. Don't get sick. Oh, Angeles, AD said this. It's my opinion. I'm wondering, did he sell any of these videos? Because once you've got a video, you just send him the link. You know what I mean? And you still got that video on your phone, so you can send it to hundreds and hundreds of people. Right? So I'm wondering if he sent any to that guy. Just curious. It, it, so I, I think... I don't think there's going to be evidence that she's taking the photos. So now you have to get into the mindset. Is she telling him to do it? Is she allowing him to do it? She's allowing him to do it. No, Maggie's not allowing him. Jen Soto is allowing him. Is she turning a blind eye? Yep. Is she negligently allowing her daughter to sleep with her boyfriend? Yep. Does she? I think you start getting into potential charges related to the images on his phone if she knew it was happening and allowed it to continue. But you would have to prove and have some evidence that she knew. So without evidence that she knew this was going on, how are you going to prove? How are you going to prove her role in this? Because if you attempted to charge her, but you didn't have evidence that she actually she knew and you just said circumstantially, well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it's obvious that she knew. It's obvious that if she slept in the bed with her boyfriend, what would happen? Is it beyond a reasonable doubt? That's not beyond a reasonable doubt. I don't even think you, you might not even get the indictment. You probably wouldn't get the indictment. You need a, a smoking gun of either a text message, some digital message on her phone, something she says in an interview, or or, you ready for it? Something Stefan says. I'm sorry. I think what she said in her statement is enough to say she knew what was going on. But when she said our sleeping arrangements was we'd all sleep in the same bed. And if I need to get a good night's sleep because of my anxiety, I would either go to another room or get them to go to another room. That's saying, look, you want to play about? Fine. Just go and do it somewhere else. Right? Now, in my eyes, that is enough there to say she knew something was going on. They've just got to prove it. And that's what they can't do. They can't prove she knew what was going on. What she said is, says, what she said is circumstantial. You know what I mean? She can always say, turn around and say, no, I didn't know what was going on. Okay, they did sleep in the same bed as each other. But I didn't know what was going on. So. Think about this for a second. Think about this for a second. I host a show. It was on tonight at 8 o'clock, one of the reasons we're going on late, called Accomplice to Murder. You've got the main actor here. What, are you going to cut a deal with the main actor to go after an accomplice because of her relationship nope. to the victim? Would you do that? No. Nope. I mean, usually it's the other way around, right? You you cut the deal with the accomplice to get the main actor. Like I, I don't see a scenario where she's the main actor. That could cut her a deal. 
Right, like they did uh, Adam Montgomery's wife, then cut her one hell of a deal, where she only ended up doing 18 months. They could cut her a deal, right? Because they could have her for child neglect, um, anything like that. They could just pile all that onto her, right? And say, look, you're looking at like, phew, five maximum of five per count. So you're looking at maximum of 20 years here. However, I think worst case scenario for her is she knows it. If you tell, if you can tell us what actually happened, then we can cut that down to two years. If that. This is going on. No, the worst case scenario is she's participating in this. And we're talking about the stuff related to the images on the phone right now. We haven't gotten into the big, big, big charge, right? So you, you, you can't argue to a jury or get an indictment just saying, well, it's obvious, ladies and gentlemen. She knew her daughter was dead because why would she say she saw her daughter, Madeline, getting ready for sc school at 8 a.m. in the morning when Stephen said, they left the house between 7.30 and 7.45, right? He was seen on camera, camera heading down the south, heading down this road south towards their home at 10 past 8. She was seen, they were seen on camera either coming in or going out or both with Maddie sitting in the car slumped to the left. She must have known. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it, it, it's, you need the evidence and you need the proof. At trial, you need the proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Like if you just go in there and say, well, it's obvious she knew or should have known or should have known. Is that the theory? I'm trying to figure out what the charge would be for someone that should have known. Under child, it could be under like, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a co-conspirator. Like that's, that's the real question here, right? Is she participating? in these images by either knowingly allowing it or actually participating in it. Now, the participation, you would think they went through all these images and they, they didn't see her. Or any of the image of, of the type where it looks like someone is holding it. If it's a still photo, that'd be difficult to prove because you have tripods, you can lean a phone, you can put a timer on it. The only way I think that you could prove someone else is holding the phone for the images is is if it's a video and the phone itself, the camera is moving, then you've got a third person involved. Yeah. True. Cake tonight, or cakey. Love your prosecutor hat. Thank you. I put on the prosecutor's hat. Okay. So I think Lundy is with us. Just tuned in. Love your work, Vinny. Thank you, Lundy. Tiffany. Right, let's just see to puppy. That may be the sentence, but that sentence will be overturned on appeal. The Supreme Court has spoken on that, so I, I don't think that's ever going to happen. No. But don't um, forget about the second set of charges, which the papers I have in front of me. Apparently, they brought in a new law this year for sex offenders, RSOs. Or oh, sex offenders, I should say, not, not RSO, sex offenders, right? That in a case like this, they can go for the death penalty, right? However, all these cases, all these incidents they've got of in happened before that law was brought in. So they can't go for the DP on this on the videos and the photos, they can't, because there was no law before then. There wasn't a law stating you could go for, they would accept it as a DP sentence. They can go for the DP on the murder charge though. So I hope they do. But as I said, they've got plenty of time to go for the murder charge because they've got, a, um, they've got this case first. Right, the case where he's got 1,700 pictures and 
1,700 pictures and videos, right? That's enough to put him away for life anyway, right? However, so they've got all that time yet to, before they, they would even set a trial date for the murder charge. The murder charge won't, might not even happen until in 2024 now. Might not even come up until 2025, 2026. Right, because they've got to get this case out of the way first and then they can do the murder case. I mean, right now, do not relate to the second set of charges. They relate to the first set of charges, which is just the phone stuff, the first case. So there's going to be two trials. There's going to be two trials. We know that. And I don't think it's going to happen quickly either. That's, no. that's my prosecutor hat analysis, that it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while because the defense knows they have no defense, so they're in no rush. They know he's not getting out on bond, so they're in no rush. So the longer they wait, the more they hope that something develops. Um, the only negotiating tool they would have would be implicating her. But why on earth, as a, I wouldn't as a prosecutor, I wouldn't take, give a deal to the main actor to get the accomplice if, if she's involved. And would I even trust his, his, would I trust anything that comes out of his mouth? I would need more. I would need more evidence. I would need some digital evidence. I would need something else. Because I'm not indicting mom based upon what he says. He's backed into a corner. He's going away. He's never getting out. And by the way, just so you know, um, a bunch of the images that were handed over, he doesn't get to see them. The defense can come to the prosecutor's office to inspect the evidence. Um, but they're not going to make copies and give it to the defense so they can share them with the defendant. That's not happening. That is not happening. Nicole LeBlanc is back. She said she took Maddie to school. She lied. Right. Now we're getting somewhere, right? Let me see. So that's where you start to see some potentially potential criminal conduct. Let's go to this. Um, okay. Blank completed a sworn written statement to the Orange County deputies to the following. Blank stated on 22624 at approximately 0800 hours, she saw Maddie getting ready for school at 0800 hours. Is that a lie? Yes. That's a lie. Because he said they left the house between 7.30, 7.45 and at 10 past 8, they've got in on camera heading south back towards Kissimmee to where they live because he said he forgot the key is key to get into the complex, right? So we, if we have got plenty of time, I'll go back now and get this key, right? They've got him there. So they've got him coming in there at whatever time, but they've also got him leaving. And that's when they've got him on camera leaving with her slumped to the left. So her head and body is like, Towards him. Yeah, would be towards him. So, but Gary, there's no way could she be seeing her daughter getting ready, getting ready, not leaving, but getting ready to go to school at eight o'clock. And then, them being going to McDonald's and all this lot twice. He went past McDonald's and said no. So they went past McDonald's. Then they doubled back and she still said no. So then they went down this other way and he dropped her off. And he dropped her off about, I think he said he dropped her off about, was it 8, 20, 8, 30? I can't be sure now. Is that a lie? Yeah. Right? You cannot lie to investigators. You can't. That's what they, that's the only thing they got Casey Anthony on, right? That and the, the forged There's track. a lot. They've got on that. Problematic on appeal, too. Okay. She saw her at 0800 getting ready for school. Blank stated Stephen Stearns took her to school and dropped her off close to school. That statement, she could say, well, that's what he told me. 
right? That's based upon what he told her. So that I don't think is because that's what he's telling everybody. So that I don't know if that is a misleading uh, police unless there's evidence that she knew she wouldn't be able to go to school because she knew that she wasn't able to anymore. Let's keep digging. She's saying at eight oh eight hundred hours, stated Stefan took her to school, dropped her close to the school, said Stefan dropped her off on Town Loop Boulevard between Town Center Boulevard and Hunter's Park Lane. Jen Soto stated that Stefan dropped her between 8.30 and 8.45. Jen stated, blank stated, never made it to school. Blank went to blank around 1,600 hours to pick up. Okay, so she stated that Maddie never made it to school. Around 4 o'clock, she went to go pick her up. She never came out of the school. And Jen stated she searched around the area and then went to her mother's office but could not locate her. Okay, is that consciousness of guilt? Is that consciousness of innocence? Is that like part of the play acting? Like Stefan, like physically driving back and forth to the school that morning? And she's like going through the motion. All right, I'll pretend to pick her up. And then I'll go there and she's not there. And I'll go, oh my goodness, where could she be? And then I'll look around for her and I'll go see uh, my mom. Hmm. Okay, Detective Tagler with OCSO, Orange County Sheriff's Office, interviewed Stefan during the case. He'd become the lead investigator for uh, the sheriff's office. Okay. Stefan provided consent to search his phone. However, he stated he accidentally performed a factory reset on the phone. You don't accidentally and he, do he it. He agreed reset. and provided his passcode. So he provides his passcode. Okay. Now, as far as the specific timeline, we had some times initially in all of this, like when the, the bag was dumped at the back gate in the dumpster with the laptop around 7, was it 7.35? Um, but this report, not as specific with the times, which is interesting, the supplemental report. Um, but here's what they say. Upon reviewing the security video, Detective Tagler observed Stefan's vehicle exiting the complex with a female wearing a green sweater in the front passenger seat. The female was slumped over to her left, which is an abnormal way for a person to be seated in a vehicle. At that point, Detective Tagler decided to secure the residence for a search warrant. So on the way out. Now, I wish, wish we had the time on that because Jen is saying that she saw her getting ready at 8 o'clock. Like, saw her at 8 o'clock, right? That, that's very clear. At 8 o'clock, she saw her getting ready for school. Tiffany Krebs, mom admitted she knew he slept in bed with Madeline. That's a smoking gun. We have got a timestamp. Right? We've got the timestamps. They've got, they, I'll tell you now, they will have pulled up every camera, right, along those roads that he said he took. And they will track him, right? I don't know if his car's that old that he would not have a track system on his phone, on his car. He probably has got a tracking system on his car. So either way, they can track him by the videos from shops, from garages, from the lights, from churches, from schools. You name it, they can track him. The route from when he left, they've got him on camera leaving at whatever time. <coughs> I think when he left at 7.30, when they're seeing him putting that, some items in that dumpster, that is the time he left with Maddie in the car. Right? But like I said, sometimes he'd come in the back way. There's two entrances and exits. And um, perhaps there isn't cameras on the one going out in the morning. Perhaps it went out another way and you can get caught on the camera going out in the morning. But they got, you got caught on the camera going out at, I think it was about half eight or whenever. I'd like to know what time, yeah, I would like to know what time they caught him on camera leaving with her slumped in the seat. 
I don't know why they haven't said that. That would be interesting to know. <coughs> because was it before the 10 past 8 when they seen him on that road going south? Or was it after 10 past 8? They've got him, on, got him on camera with her slumped in the car. But either way, the mother could not have seen her daughter at 8 o'clock. Not if they've got him coming south when he should have been going north or whatever. He should have been going any other direction but south. So if they've got him going south at 10 past 8, there's no way the mother saw her daughter getting ready at 8 o'clock. So they would pull up all the footage, camera footage from every place. McDonald's, the traffic lights, garages, shops, and they will be able to track his route. <coughs> oh, what's the case? Was it last year? Where it was um, a border patrol guy who killed his mistress, and they tracked him all the way from leaving his works in his car, in the car van, in his works car. Leaving his works all the way up to his house, right? He'd come out, he got back in the car, gone, tracked him then from there up this other road, and they was tracking him from cameras by cameras. And some of them was quite a distance away, but when you zoomed in, you could see his car go past, right? And there's from churches and Shops and traffic lights and garages and everything. They tracked him all the way to his house, all the way back, up this other road, where they believed he got rid of some items. Right? And then all the way back down this road and back to his works, to where he should have been working. They tracked his every move. So they can do that. And they will be doing that. It is, but it isn't. Then you have to presume that what's, uh, what, what took place in the photographs was going to happen. Like you'd have to know that was going to happen. You have to believe that that was going to happen. Right? There's a level of negligence to it, but to what level? Like, is there? A, there there's no presumption that someone is a is a pedo. You know what I mean? There's, there's no presumption like that. You'd have to have to prove in court. You'd have to have some level of knowledge. And not only that. Just say, for instance, Madeline was on a light in the house. I think it happened on the night time. He hung a light on the Sunday night. She's probably turned around and said, I'm not having this. You get away from me. I'm going to tell someone at school and blah, blah, blah. Right? He's killed her. For whatever reason. Perhaps she said, I'm pregnant. Right? He can have her be pregnant. We don't know. But I don't think she was pregnant because if she was, they'd be having him on murder of two. He's only charged on one murder case because they charge him for murder on the death of a child, a pregnancy in a birth, in a womb. But then it all depends. Some case states... Don't unless it's a child over, say, three months. If it's over three months, then it can be. <coughs> <coughs> but if it's under three months, then might not class it as a murder of a child. If you see what I mean. But she could have said anything. And I think something happened on the Sunday night. So... If, say, he didn't have her in that car at 7.30 when he first left, right? And he didn't have her in that car at 10 past 8 when they seen him coming back towards kissing me. That means her body was in that house with the mother and he's had to get that body out of that house. And from what I understand, there's no garages, no garage. Right, from what I've seen of the properties, there was no garage. So he's got to then 
carrier from the property to the car with no one seeing him at 8 o'clock time. By 8 o'clock, people are busy coming and going, taking the children to school and things like that, going to work. So he could have been seen if that was the case. So I'd like to know when they caught him on camera going, what time it was. Was it after 8 o'clock? Or was it before 8 o'clock that they got him on camera with her sitting in the car slumped? Right. Let's now, the admission is huge, but you're missing that one other piece that you need. You need that other piece to be a true uh, accomplice to that conduct. But it's close, and it's compelling. And you know what? Like... You have to make a case legally, but if you just took these facts and put them in front of a jury, they would convict her, right? They absolutely oh, yeah. would because they have common sense. Two plus two equals four. Plus once you showed them the picture, it'd be game over. But I don't think the judge would allow you to get there. Videos and photos are timestamped. Couldn't they find out where her phone was at those times? Yes, they could. I don't know if some of them might be too old. But like he says... The, where they lived, it wasn't a big house. It was big enough, but not big, big. So if her phone's in the living room, say in the kitchen downstairs, and his phone's upstairs, it's going to show them together. Going to show those two phones together. Right? But, but it could be how precise there, could they be? This is not, downstairs. it's not a mansion. <laughs> right? We're not talking about giving <laughs> Okay. Live in this huge, come on, huge, huge, huge home. It's like twenty two hundred square feet, and it's like three levels up and down. So wherever you are, you're basically next to each other, even if you're in a different room. Wicked main ha. I believe Jen hasn't been charged yet because they're hoping something comes out in Stefan's trial. Yep. Um. Yes and no. Now the, the thing that we also don't know is like after she was shown that pictures, did she cooperate anymore? Did she continue the conversations? Did she get a lawyer? Did she just zip it up? What did she do after she was confronted with the with the actual photograph of this conduct? Did she not provide? I mean, that's that's the moment, right? That's the moment where me as a prosecutor, that's the key moment. How do you react to that? Do you now come to me and say, what can I do? How can I help you get the man that did this to my daughter? Whether it's you in person or your lawyer, what can I do? What information do you need? What she 1,000% cooperative from that point forward because if she's not, she, she flunks the parent test and the red flag goes up. She flunked the parent the test right test. before then. If her reaction at that moment is not, here I am, let me help you. I can give you days. I can give you times. I can give you whatever you need. I can tell you everything I know. Or do you just zip it up and say nothing while they're still looking for your daughter? Because remember, at this point, she's still missing. The point I've of these been interviews is to that Friday. Here's Rashida Thomas, owner of Rashida's Healing Hands. Hey, Vinny. Good evening. Love the hat. This is the prosecutor's hat. I, you know, I had to put it on so you can tell what I'm speaking as a prosecutor versus uh, as a parent. Do you think it's possible to invite Madeline's mother on closing arguments? Love to hear what she's got to say. We've been reaching out. We've been asking. Trust me, we're asking everyone. No, I think everyone's a little right now. You know, there's like two different points of all this. When you have a missing child, generally people speak. Then when the child's found, depending upon all the circumstances, people clam up a little bit. And then it becomes the shock of the reality. And then as time passes on, then maybe, maybe they will want to speak. But we'll see where the legal case leads to. And Lundy with the rim shot. He didn't have a tripod. A couple inches at best. Boom, boom. Good one, Lundy. Um, this is from Ellen. That reminds me of Bing Crosby. Thank you. But they had the, there was a squad, and, and I think they still do it. When uh, you get your first homicide, uh, arrest, or conviction, you get a hat. Uh, Starlar Daniels, wouldn't mom's admission be probable cause? Not enough. Not enough just putting her in that position. 
right? Now she said as a general matter, was she questioned about all these specific dates? Is she even home on these dates? We don't know the dates on the phone. I don't think you do it. It's not enough. It's not enough. Like it'd be enough to put this evidence in front of a jury. I'm sure they would convict her. But it, legally, it wouldn't, it wouldn't withstand the scrutiny either of the grand jury or of a probable cause hearing with the judge. So, oh, wow. Sandra Cruz today probably sat in the corner waiting to clean her up. See, if you had some evidence of that, then obviously, obviously. But where's that evidence going to come from? And I'm sure they are looking at this because as outraged as you are, as outraged as you are, so are these investigators. And trust me, they want to arrest and charge anyone and everyone who they can prove is in some manner responsible. Now, that's why I have the two hats. Or I don't know what my head is there. Oh, we keep the hat on the rest of the show. Um, but before I had the prosecutor's hat on, as a parent, yeah. But as a prosecutor, different analysis. Because we've got to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. What about the timestamps of the pictures? I mean, we've got, they've, they've laid out some of the dates and times here. See, they don't give the dates and times here, but you're going to get that from the metadata. I would think you'd be able to timestamp when all these pictures were taken. Because I think it's just answering these questions now. Investigations happen; these trials happen. <coughs> so with me talking, number one, I try to analyze and explain everything that's going on, so our system makes some sense. To The investigation is continuing. CBC, total loser, no job, plays with toys, lives, lives with parents, does drugs, filthy personal care, black soulless eyes. What did Jen see? Well, only she can answer that question. We can surmise someone that was paying attention to her, someone that told her what she wanted to hear. Yeah. Told her what she wanted to hear. And her attorney, if we put her on trial, will say she was a victim of him as well. Every criminal defendant always points the finger at some something else or someone else. And here it would be obvious. Pointed at SS, pointed at him. Averini car designs, car designs. Av AV Renee card designs. AV Renee card designs. She allowed her daughter to snuggle with a grown man. Unacceptable, in my opinion. Yeah, especially if he's off again, on again. Snuggle, you don't snuggle, you hug. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't get bed bugs bite. Now the adults will be going to the adult room. Oh, you want to sleep with mom? Okay, go with mom. You're scared tonight? Go sleep with mom. I'll go sleep in the other room. Or I'll sleep on the floor. Or maybe I'll go to my own house. Oh, that's right. I don't have one. Right. I'm not going to go any further with this because it's just answering questions that are coming up. Right, but the mother, she must have some knowledge. She must have. Now he has done another video, which I don't want to go through now because I've been on here two hours now. I've just gone two hours, and that's like an hour or so long. We can probably look at that. Uh, Thursday tomorrow. I might do one tomorrow afternoon where we look at that. Right? About th four, three, four o'clock my time, which is about 11, 12 o'clock lunchtime. You're t where you are, between five and six hours. So I might do that second part tomorrow. But I don't understand how she has openly said they slept in the same bed. And if she was having an, an, uh, suffering with her anxiety, she would ask them to go to another room. She must have known. She must have. But I definitely would like to know what time they caught him on the camera leaving. If it was before 8 a.m. with her in the car or later. Because that run, what he'd done, where he was going up towards the school and round to McDonald's and back round again and all that. 
unless they've got him on camera and they can see her in the car, they've got him on camera leaving the complex with her in the car at 7.30 in the morning. If they've got her on camera anywhere along that route in his car before 8 a.m., then we know she lied. Right, that's what I'd like to know, the times. I'd like to know the times of where of what time he left, what time he what cameras the route, the times of the route. And if they got her on camera at any time on that route before eight AM. We know they've got him on video at seven thirty putting some rubbish, throwing some articles in the big bin, in a big bin. So you wouldn't do that if the child was still alive. You're getting rid of evidence. You know what I mean? So that child, Madeline, was, un not, was dead before 7.30. That's why I say the mother has lied, because there's no way she could have seen Madeline at 8 o'clock. It's not like, oh, well, you won't need this school bag or your laptop no more. I'm just going to throw them in the bin, okay, sweetheart? Right? They're not gonna, she's not going to stand for that. She needs that laptop. That's school property. Right? School property. You can't just throw something like that away. So, anyway, there will be part two to this, and I'll do it tomorrow afternoon, okay? And I'll set up the same with this picture showing, but with the, just the audio, where you can hear the audio. Uh, the next one is, um, hang on, I'll tell you what the next one is. Oh, I haven't got it on my Facebook. I've got to find it and then I'll put it to my Facebook. But it's about the timeline. They discuss Jen Soto's timeline. Right, so we get more information from that tomorrow. Okay? So I'd just like to say thank you for everyone being here tonight with me. Please... Hit the like button, ring the bell for all notifications. Subscribe, comment and share. So thank you. Thank you all for being here today. I really do appreciate you all. Thank you, MCAS. I don't know where all my other cougars were tonight. Perhaps I, don't want, perhaps I didn't want to talk about this one, which I don't blame them. I always say, if it's not for you, Walk away. You know what I mean? If it's not for you, walk away. So, anyway. See you all tomorrow. I'll be on tomorrow about 3, between 3 and 4 p.m. Okay, which will be about 11, 10, 11 a.m. your time. Somewhere around back then, okay? So, get a good night's sleep and I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night.